Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you an over-engineered potentiometer, which is technically not a potentiometer but an encoder, but it can be used in the same fashion as a potentiometer. But uh, I will guide you through the differences between an encoder and a potentiometer, so you will see how this thing can be applied. And the subject of this video is contained in this small box. And you might be already familiar with this circuit because I have already shown this in some of my videos. And the, the basic circuit, which is the most important thing in this project, is this AS5600 uh, uh, magnetic encoder. So basically it contains one chip and a few uh, capacitors and resistors. But what it does is that this chip inside has four hole sensors uh, carefully placed along the edges of a square. So they are nicely and symmetrically uh, placed inside this chip. And they can detect the changes of a magnetic field. So basically you have to put a magnet about this chip and rotate it. And the tricky part about the chip is that uh, it requires a special kind of magnet and uh, that is this guy here which is a diametrically magnetized magnet and what this means is that the magnet uh, doesn't have the north and south poles uh, sticking out from the top and the bottom of the of the cylinder but it is sticking out from the side uh, of, of the magnet so as you rotate this magnet about this chip then the magnetic field will change about the four uh, hole sensors and based on the differences the chip can figure out the position of the magnet and basically this will make this chip into an absolute encoder so it can uh, locate the magnet uh, and its position uh, along a circle so 360 degrees and since it has a 12-bit AD converter, it can resolve this uh, circle into 4096 equal steps. So the angular resolution of this chip, or this, uh, let's call it potentiometer dash encoder, is 0 0.087 something something uh, degrees. So you can distinguish quite small uh, displacements uh, with this kind of thing. And now if we want to talk about the potentiometers and the encoders and how these things are combined into this thing is basically we have to know that uh, when we rotate a potentiometer we have uh, like end points so there is a starting point uh, based on the wiring that will be the uh, case when you don't read any resistance uh, through the viper so you short it out two pins uh, let's say on the left side and then when you move this to the maximum then you short it out uh, the other two sides and you read the maximum resistance on the viper and the other side of the potentiometer but wherever you move the knob of the potentiometer or the shaft of the potentiometer you always know the absolute position which is always reflected by the let's say output resistance of, of the potentiometer however if you have an encoder, a rotor encoder, this is a, let's say, relative encoder, uh, all you get is just two pulses on the CRK and the DT pins uh, when you rotate and uh, click the shaft of this uh, encoder. So it has, depending on the encoder, uh, 16 or 20 well-defined uh, positions along the 360 degrees circle. And uh, based on the direction of the rotation, the two pulses which come out from the DT and CRK uh, pins will determine the uh, signals. So, so basically, when you rotate in one direction, you have uh, one uh, certain uh, pulse uh, sequence. And when you rotate it counterclockwise, you have the opposite of that. And based on the sequence of the pulses, uh, for example, the microcontroller can figure out the direction of the rotation. And then, of course, uh, you can measure speed with this thing because uh, you can uh, measure the time between the 
uh, two pauses and so on and so on. And then if you go to this guy here or this thing because it's inside this, is that's what we basically have. So uh, we have well-known positions uh, inside this 360 degrees circle and we know if the magnet is aligned in a certain direction then we uh, then we can read zero degrees and if it's aligned in another uh, certain direction we can read 90 degrees and so on and so on but we can do it only within limits because if we go to 359 and we turn just one degrees more with the magnet then uh, this thing will read zero degrees because we arrived arrived back to the to the origin so in that sense it uh, it works in the same way as a potentiometer because uh, we just arrived to the end of the of the limits basically where you cannot turn the shaft anymore and yeah in that sense when you st start to turn then the numbers just uh, overflow and you start counting uh, from zero again but then when we put it next to a encoder then you can uh, rotate the magnet about this uh, chip uh, as long as you want so here I can also do like several uh, turns and uh, nothing will hinder the turns mechanically so nothing will uh, oppose it and I can do millions of turns and the same uh, happens here however since there is no mechanical moving parts this will survive much more turns than this well technically infinite turns but this has a mechanism inside so after a while it will wear out uh, so in that sense this is an encoder and we just have to set up a certain smart algorithm uh, in order to be able to register multiple turns and in order to be able to detect the direction of these things and uh, everything is on this microcontroller I already made a uh, quite popular video about this about uh, this encoder so uh, check that in the corner but now I just want to show you an application and that is inside this box and now I'm going to disassemble this thing it consists of four parts all of them are 3d printed and I will show you how I built uh, this thing so bear with me, I just quickly disassemble it and I explain how you can build this for yourself. So I disassembled everything and I can show you what we have. So we have the main enclosure, let's say. So all the dimensions are carefully uh, figured out because there has to be a certain gap between the top of the chip and uh, the magnet. So this has a certain dimension, uh, considering the fact that uh, we have a certain thickness to, to the PCB and so on. So the PCB is placed inside. And then on the back of this PCB, I, I just have some uh, Kapton tape and the four wires come out, so for the power supply, uh, plus uh, 3 watts or 5 watts, depending on how you want to power it, uh, ground, and then uh, clock and uh, data for the I2C connection. And I just use this tape so I can uh, neatly uh, have these wires coming out next to each other. So this is inside this box. And then this is the bottom part, and it is nothing else, it's just a small uh, 2 millimeter high area here with a notch here so I can uh, have the cables coming out in a well-organized way. And then on top of this uh, main enclosure uh, comes this part which is which is just a flat part here uh, with a small uh, notch because I have a certain type of uh, bearing I just show you very quickly that has a tiny flange here so it can fit in the in the plastic part very very nicely so it's uh, pushed into this with a quite tight fit and that's how we get our magnet uh, placed in in this place so yeah this is another knob with another color but what you can see is that we have the knob part the top and then there is a cylinder here and I just left a a five millimeter diameter and two millimeter high empty area in this uh, yeah, shaft 
and that's where uh, this tiny magnet goes in uh, this guy here so that's there and then uh, by carefully assembling everything I know that the distance between the top of this chip and uh, the magnet will be like one millimeter and that's okay according to the data sheet so then uh, yeah that's how it looks like and uh, I don't really know why but this kind of uh, bearing is not rotating very well uh, so this feels a bit sluggish but uh, otherwise it, it's quite fine and why I have this kind of M8 uh, bolt with the nut and the bearing is that if you don't want to 3D print then you can have an M8 uh, bolt and uh, replicate the same thing so now I'm holding the bearing and uh, I can rotate this thing and what I can do is that since the end of this board has a flat surface I can just put the magnet there as you can see and then this can go about the uh, chip of course you can have a much shorter uh, bolt but uh, this is just for demonstration or you can have the opposite way have the magnet here because these are always some sort of magnetic material if you don't buy something stainless if it's a 304 stainless it will not be magnetic but this is some uh, probably some ferritic uh, steel with a zinc coating so it will be magnetic so then uh, everything is just uh, sandwiched uh, together the bottom part is not necessary but uh, I wanted to have a flat part only the screws are sticking out and then the top part is more uh, crucial so this is like carefully uh, dimensioned and uh, yeah it works perfectly with the with the magnet so now I really assemble it and uh, show you the rest of the video so it's done our plastic box is assembled and uh, now I just power up this uh, Arduino Nano and uh, see how this thing works so it's a simple welcome message and then I clear the display and don't show anything until I start to turn the magnetic encoder so I start to turn it and you can see that the degrees are showing up and uh, yeah you can change it quite rapidly as you can see the display can keep up I can go in both directions so now I uh, decrease the value and will reach zero quite soon so that works and also as you can see I can move it very precisely so by 0 0.1 degrees I can go there I can even try to align it to zero degrees but that will be a challenge because it's very sensitive and uh, as I said this doesn't have uh, discrete clicks as a rotary encoder has so I have to really rely on the on the friction uh, inside this bearing so yeah and uh, sometimes the numbers are jumping but that's because uh, it's not perfectly aligned but uh, you just move a little bit and it will not be jumping it's like yeah now you see four and five but it can go away and it's it's very rapid so really if I can try to turn it very very quickly it, it will still uh, catch up with this and uh, yeah I can do as much turns as I want nothing will uh, change I just get uh, incrementally higher numbers uh, here and now I restarted this thing uh, so we started zero and the notch a tiny indent here on the knob is facing me and I just want to show that uh, it registers the full turn perfectly then if I go backwards then it should go to zero yeah, more or less I mean this is just my uh, precision or in inaccuracy of uh, finding the right spot with turning the knob but yeah it works so as you can see uh, this can be used in many ways and I will actually make a new project with this because uh, yeah it can be used for many things for example 
uh, moving stepper motors and so on and I will use it in that kind of application but I still wait for some parts but uh, until that uh, you can see how this can be useful for your uh, uses and uh, since I have already shown the software in my other videos I'm not going to talk about the software but I refer you to that video instead and uh, it contains exactly the same software so I'm showing exactly the same software on this Arduino and uh, it prints exactly the same numbers so the total angle uh, the only difference is that now I made this kind of uh, box uh, for it you will find the 3D files on my website and uh, you can use this as a potentiometer all you have to do is that you need to pass uh, the variable uh, which is now the total uh, angular displacement into the part of the code that you want to use uh, for yeah working with the uh, displacement and you can also map this value to a scale and then uh, you can adjust PWM values uh, with this you can uh, adjust uh, anything with this so I think this is what I wanted to tell about this uh, let's say new project uh, I told you what are the differences between these uh, potentiometers and encoders and how they are related to this kind of box I hope uh, it was uh, clear enough and then you could see what is inside this box it's just basically this thing uh, placed in a certain uh, spot uh, with this knob with the magnet and then we have an Arduino Nano and a OLED display uh, just to show the information and everything else is the same as in my uh, previous uh, video related to this circuit so don't forget to check the description and then visit my website curiousscientist.tech because i have all the information for this i will upload the code there again and i will also upload the drawings for these for this tiny box so you can mount this kind of circuit board directly there and you can also find some other useful things hopefully useful things on my website. So I hope this video was useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.